Please join me with palms together in Gassho. My life is not only my life. My life is made up of the countless sacrifices, caring, and kindness of others. Namo Amida Namo Amida Namo Amida Amanda. Good morning. Hayo gozaimasu. Welcome to the first Sunday of November. I want to take a moment to especially thank Matsue for that wonderful Kansho bringing us to service. Uh, I want to thank our newest Datsui member, Blanca. If we please stand, Blanca, so you can see everybody. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of the wonderful teachers who have had in these uh, many years, from uh, Reverend Kosho Yukawa of the White River, who uh, gifted this uh, Buddhist robe, the Okesa, to me, to Reverend Kuahara at the Center for Buddhist Education, who uh, set me on my way with his Nenju, to our teachers, Reverend Patty, Reverend Bob, our minister's assistants who adorned me with this robe to remember uh, why we are all here. So, this has been quite the eventful autumn season. And October was great, huh? Or what? We had enjoyed here in Sacramento the fourth wettest October ever on record. Our Sangha member and bowling lead bowler George Takenami rolled a personal best five strike, four spare, 192 just last weekend. The new Golden One Kings Downtown Arena is up and running. And the Chicago Cubs working with the correct view, the correct thought, the correct speech, and correct action broke the legendary 108 year curse with the World Series win last Wednesday, November 2nd. And we have a very interesting presidential election coming up this week. And for Dharma School, can you see the Dharma School kids? Raise your hands. Yeah. Okay, we have something special happening today. Okay. We have our fire drill, emergency evacuation drill. <laughs> so please, Please, after offering incense today, please promptly report to your classrooms for roll call. We will go through the drill, and once our, at our evacuation zone, we will again take roll to make sure that everyone is accounted for. And then, as a group, we'll return to our classroom for a little poonko return of gratitude party time. A little treat for what we know will be a successful emergency evacuation practice. So most of you well know that each time we come to our Sacramento Betsumi and sit in our hongo, we are taking a moment out of the busyness of our very well-scheduled lives to sit quietly and to remember what we know is really of value in living each day. I do see some new faces in our hongo today. Thank you for coming to visit. Those who are familiar with the martial arts may know the term dojo, dojo. The term dojo means place of practice. Where we are sitting now is called our hondo, hondo. The word hondo literally translates to mean primary or essential place. In fact, without a hondo, we would not be a temple, for it is here that we practice the Dharma. To practice the Dharma is to reflect deeply and mindfully on what is true and real and genuine. And for those who are visiting for the very first time, there is symbolic meaning to everything in our hondo. And most everything that is done, from the moment we step forward with our left foot and bow to enter the hondo, to when we bow and leave the hondo using our right foot is an exercise in mindfulness. And I will be sharing a little bit of that meaningful symbolism a little bit later. We like to think of this Betsuin and our hondo as our dharma home. 
Each time we are here, we have this moment to sit in our special place of practice, to clear our minds, and to quietly listen to the Dharma. Here, we try to unplug, unconnect, and unattach from the cyber world. We power down our tablets, our electronic games, and our cell phones, and become physically and mentally and emotionally in the moment that is right now. We are asked to shut down our Snapchats, our Twitter feeds, our Facebook posts, and avoid bringing in food or drinks as we might when we are going to see a sporting event or a movie. As I mentioned here, we try to sit respectfully and reflectively, for it is here in our hondo that we come to listen to the Dharma and to consider our experiences and thoughtfully remember again what is truly of value in living each day. Today, we are observing our annual pet memorial service. Here, at our Sacramento Gatsuin, each year, we have one special Sunday Dharma School service to remember the very loved pet members of our families that we have lost. And I am honored to speak today for our pet memorial service. This pet memorial service, in many ways, is reflective of the two key principles that we know as the two eyes of Buddhism, impermanence and interdependence. Impermanence, or change, and interconnectedness, or oneness. Today, on our altar, we can see displayed family pets that have been without doubt counted among not just our best friends, but dearly loved members of our families. And it is very often in caring for our loved pets that we learn our first lessons in being connected and responsible for another life. We feed, we walk, we vaccinate, clean and wash our pets. And we also enjoy playing with them and responding to their joy in recognizing people we love. Stevie is a great example of how loved our pets can become. Not just to Gordon and the Nita family, but she is loved by so many. When we care, we become interconnected. When we love, we become one. And there is no doubt that Stevie is interconnected and a part of our Betsy. Reverend Patty once shared with me that a family that lost a loved one some months before had called coming in to visit. One question that was asked was, is Stevie there? They felt so comforted by Stevie's presence when they came to the Betsimi to make arrangements for the funeral some months ago that they were looking forward to being with her again. There is no doubt that loved pets in our lives are significant in ways we can never begin to measure. For with those truly loved pets, we experience the deepest bonds of loving care, both given and received. And when we lose them, that loss is among our first experiences of the reality of impermanence. So again, it is from our pets that we often learn those essential teachings of the Dharma, that nothing can last forever. And yet, at the same time, all things are interconnected and one. For me, this pet memorial service is for my dog, Maya. Maya was a rescue puppy that we adopted when I was 11 years old. She was a furry, black, French mutt poodle and weighed in at a whopping eight pounds. She had a spunky personality and an attitude that matched her look after grooming with pom-poms on her paws, and bows in her ears, and a tall pompadour on her head. Maya quickly became protector of our home, barking to alert us if she heard someone coming up the walkway and always barking when the doorbell rang. And she would jump into alert mode if the unruly delta winds blew branches up against the window or our house. Maya craved cuddling, and she loved to keep company 
with everyone who came to visit. Back in the day, Maya would accompany me each and every afternoon on my 150 house newspaper route. Uh, I used to deliver the uh, local paper, the Stockton Record, and once while on a family vacation, we had asked a family friend who lived uh, across town to look after Maya while we were away. Unfortunately, the very next day, we were told that Maya had scratched her way through the neighbor's screen door and went missing. Our hearts sunk when we heard the news. We went out to post hand-drawn flyers uh, all around the neighborhood and through the surrounding communities, asking, have you seen this dog? Although no one said a word, I think we were all quietly preparing ourselves to accept that we might never see her again. How could an eight-pound miniature poodle survive on her own? Then, to our shock and disbelief, three days later, Maya showed up on our front porch, hungry, loving, but no worse for the wear. So strong was her drive to be at home with her family that following instinct, her sense of smell, and sheer determination, that little mutt found her way seven and a half miles back home down streets and sidewalks she had never walked before and from a home she had never been to before. Years later, in 1984, when my dad came home to recuperate from open heart surgery, Maya never left his side. Cozying up to him every morning and every night as if to say, it's okay, Dad, I'm here. I am here. Each day, she would walk closely by his side as Dad reconditioned himself to regain his strength. To this day, I am convinced that Maya was key to Dad's recovery. We enjoyed Maya's companionship for 16 years, and as much as she cared for us through those years, we took care of her through cataracts and her loss of sight, to diapers so that she could stay inside the home, and to the very end. Maya passed and died in 1987. And although it has been 29 years since she has been gone, I miss her deeply. Our pets ask so little of us, yet give us so much. Even now when I think of Maya, I feel immeasurable joy, caring, and kindness. When we love our pets, they return that love unconditionally. We see them waiting eagerly at a window or a gate or by the door, anxiously waiting to welcome us home so that they can be by our side. When we stop to think about it, many of the traits that we look for in our pets are those that we value and treasure in a best friend or mate. Dedicated, attentive, protective, yet also playful, kind, and caring. Maya was all this and much more, and we who know what it means to have a loving pet know this well. Our pets tend to think of us first and themselves second, thinking of others first and themselves if ever later. Our animals live freely, without expectation, not knowing or caring what tomorrow may bring. Instead, our pets instinctively know that they only have today, this moment, right now, to enjoy, to appreciate, and to treasure. The photographs on display speak to our experiences of our loved pets that have deeply touched our lives with their love and having to know the loss of their lives. Each animal has taught us to open our Dharma eyes to the reality of life and the truth that the Buddha taught. On his deathbed, the Buddha asked us to live each day fully and with clarity, appreciating each precious moment, 
the Buddha said, live seeing the reality in life. Live mindful that in life everything is impermanent. So take nothing for granted. Yet also know that all things are impermanent and interconnected, interdependent. So care for one another, care for one another, and take care of the environment. For we are all one in the karmic fabric of life. When we understand these truths, we have a chance to fully savor and treasure each day and each experience. For we know that each day is never to come again. And yet each day and every experience, each pet and every person that we know will always be a part of the karmic and karma of our life. Thank you for joining us this morning for our special pet memorial service. In closing, please join me with palms together in Gashyo. My life is not only my life. My life is made up of the countless sacrifices, caring, and kindness of others, which includes our very loved pets. Namo Amidabha. Namo Amidabha. Namo Amidabha.